Now I invite Agur, uh, Agur Yogi, and uh, his uh, uh, his journey, his life journey, is almost uh, exactly the opposite, and uh, his experience, I am sure, uh, exactly as valuable. Agur. Good morning. I guess it's still morning. I know you've been sitting here around for an hour, two hours perhaps, so it's completely okay if you like to stand up to, to some exercises to be more engaged. You can walk around, it doesn't disturb us or me, so it's, let's take it as a rock concert, jump on your, on your places and then uh, feel happy and fun. Uh, yeah, I'm coming uh, more from corporate uh, to startups uh, actually. Uh, Thanks, Raymond, uh, for the salt. Uh, with my uh, current startup, uh, we went through your first uh, extremely extensive hackathon in, in Pelisi about half a year ago. That was a great boost uh, to ask Robin Deem uh, what about I'm going to, uh, to give a pitch uh, uh, in a while. So uh, if there is any startup uh, builders uh, in this room, uh, keep your eyes open uh, for the Salto uh, camp, next camp, which is going to happen in April, I guess. So join and on board and then uh, gain a lot out of that. Um, my previous uh, or my last uh, corporate adventure was related to Big Bank. It's an Estonian bank uh, operating in nine different uh, European countries. Uh, when I joined uh, this bank, uh, it was 90% uh, uh, manual and 10% digital. And when I left, left the bank, it was uh, vice versa. 90% digital uh, automated decision making and, and, and 10% uh, manual and this 10% we remain just for the sake of uh, regulatory and, uh, and reporting because you're always uh, walking on a cray line uh, in, the, in this area and, and it's better to have some manual control. And I really second to what Raymond said that um, don't expect uh, old people to start innovating just by click. Uh, create a team create a culture, hire advisors, and hire the new team. And then you can make old established company to be innovative and to run internal startups. And the change is also, but uh, don't expect that uh, just one day uh, old people will wake up and, and will start innovating like hell. Doesn't happen. So uh, I'm Agor. I'm uh, uh, just turned to be uh, 49 years old. And I'm from startup. Doesn't match much. Yeah. The startupper should be like 15, 12, 14, something like this. Uh, drinking a lot of Red Bull. I hate Red Bull. And then uh, being awake uh, all day and night round. I like sleeping. Uh, so not startup -ish at all. Um, but uh, let me to give a few advices. Uh, what is the right age? And what is the right place to build a startup. So the right age, actually, you can uh, access uh, a research, uh, age and high growth uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, it's, uh, it's published online. It's two years old uh, materials. Uh, they've been interviewing uh, millions uh, of people related uh, to startup and, uh, and innovation. And what they found out? Average startup founder was 45 years old uh, when he or she founded the most successful uh, company. So there are a lot of, lot of uh, young startuppers, uh, and as Raymond said, uh, create your first startup, then you, at first you will start searching for the incubator uh, or accelerator, what to join, because there you can re really learn uh, from more experienced people. Uh, and those are those. 45 or 45 plus here. Oops, now it went quickly. My bad. <coughs> so, just a few facts. Uh, as I'm the last trap between uh, the coffee break uh, and, uh, and, and uh, sitting here in the room, then I'll let you uh, to follow most of those, uh, those facts. Uh, but it's pretty, pretty interesting uh, reading. And uh, maybe the last bit is the most important, that 60-year-old startuppers compared to 30-years-old. 60-years-old uh, people are 1.7 times more likely to build something 
which really comes to be an unicorn. Not just an, an, an way of uh, living or just having a startup, uh, but to create, inventing and then building something which really becomes to be uh, successful. Uh, so experiences do matter also in uh, in a startup world. Yes, you must have energy. Yes, you, you must be crazy. Uh, you must like work without limits. I don't mean uh, working hours, but just about the crazy ideas. Everything is worth uh, to be tested. Uh, because until you test, you actually don't know if this is a good or this is the bad idea. So uh, you may have assumptions, but you probably know that uh, the assumption is, there is a bad word, of all the failures. <coughs> but where to build your startup? So if you now think that, hmm, no, nice. I'm also a bit older than 12 years, so it might be a right time to build my first startup. So where should I go to build it? There are two countries in the world which are really standing out. Uh, related to the number of uh, unicorns uh, compared to uh, population or number of uh, startups in the country, or again, uh, the number of startups uh, compared to, uh, to the population or to the GDP. Um, I'm going to be, uh, to be speaking uh, on about one of those. Anyone likes to give a guess what's the second? Almost same good. Or perhaps sometimes even better. Nope. Nope. Exactly. Estonia and Israel, by far ahead. Singapore is approaching, uh, but it's not there. US is psh. That doesn't count. They have just a lot of money. Uh, and and um, they have a, a long history, and they have super good marketeers. Uh, but what makes uh, Estonia so special? Um, you can uh, Google later uh, for uh, uh, Startup Estonia. <coughs> we have pretty good uh, government-funded uh, uh, team, actually, uh, collecting and facilitating all around uh, the startup culture in, uh, in, in Estonia. And they just launched a database of uh, Estonian startups. Uh, at the end of the last year, it was something like 960. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we achieved 1,000 uh, startups uh, in this list. Uh, you can uh, search for different uh, details and, and to understand in which phases those are, which are going to be uh, next unicorn, so where you can invest your money if you want. Uh, to be part of this success, but right now we have 71 startups per uh, 100,000 uh, <coughs> inhabitants. Uh, last year uh, there was 71 new investments uh, done compared to uh, 40 in uh, in year before. So the growth is not exactly doubling, but uh, almost uh, doubling. 28 out of those investments were bigger than uh, larger than 1 million uh, per investment. Uh, which is uh, also like about 50% growth compared to the uh, year earlier. So, uh, so far, maybe the U.S. has been the best place uh, to raise money because uh, if you have a story and if you have a team, then it's pretty easy to, to raise a million, maybe even a ten. Uh, it wasn't so easy uh, uh, in Europe still a uh, year or a few ago. It's improving a lot. Uh, startups in Estonia are generating 3% of the GDP. Uh, taxes paid by startups to the state last year, 77 million. Uh, it's uh, plus 46% compared to uh, 2018. What is the GDP growth to countries this, uh, this time? Few percent? Two? Maybe three? maybe minus two, it's 46 here. And it has been year by year by year. So people are making, uh, or the traditional businesses are really making jokes uh, on startups that oh, they have just fun and hackathons and they are just burning the money. Yeah, some of them do also that. Uh, but you see, 3% of the GDP is created already. 
uh, by 1,000 startups, which has been growing rapidly, and it's the growth rate is like tenfold compared to the, to the standard or the traditional economy. And uh, we have pretty good diversity uh, in place also somehow. So um, even the regulators should like uh, our industry. 30% of women and then 64% and of men. And we have four unicorns uh, in Estonia. Congratulations to Lithuania. You got your first one uh, pretty recently also. I keep my fingers crossed for Latvia. There are many promising uh, ones to, uh, to come to this level. And we have even our own movie. You haven't seen it? Google it. It's worth to, uh, to see. It's fun, and it gives a pretty good understanding that uh, how the life in startup world actually goes. And IMDb have uh, rated us also pretty generously. 7.2 7, 7 uh, points on that. So Estonia welcomes uh, startups. And when you build a new one, then be sure that in your advisory board, you will have some experienced ones also, because people in age 45 plus are more. So to succeed or to support you to become to be uh, really successful in this scheme. So thank you uh, for that. Uh, any questions related to startups, startups in Estonia, to startup skin, about Ask Robin, what we are doing, uh, or what I did in Big Bank, um, just approach me uh, with uh, lunch breaks, and I'm happy to share. Agur, uh, will you maybe tell a few words about your Ask Robin? It's a very unusual startup since you moved your business to Latin America. Can you tell me a few words? Yeah, the Ask Robin is. Doing. Yeah, thanks uh, for the question. Uh, Ask Robin is uh, is a marketplace, so the credit marketplace. Uh, we don't uh, issue loans. Uh, we don't take investments. Uh, we're the marketplace. So Amazon is marketplace. There are companies and people who want to uh, sell something. There are people uh, who want to buy something, and and uh, Amazon is facilitating those relations. So. Uh, me and my co-founder, uh, we had some earlier or some previous relations to Latin markets, and we saw that uh, about 65% even more of, uh, of the population has never had any connection uh, to traditional uh, banking or financing. They've been borrowing money for the, from the neighbors and from the cartels and, and uh, from uh, bad people and, and then uh, falling into the depths and, and uh, ruining their lives. Mm, and we saw that the fintech industry is booming up there, but mainly from the lending side, uh, not, from the, not from the marketplace or not from the educational side. So what's our goal there is, uh, is to build a marketplace where the people can go, come to fill their uh, own profiles, and then we do pretty extensive data analytics to micro-profile those users. Then we do the same uh, with the credit institutions. Uh, they can register them themselves on our platform, uh, they will define the expected uh, user profiles uh, with whom they'd like to get uh, to be connected. And then we run a lot of uh, data analytics behind that also, because usually uh, when you talk to any of those uh, credit institutions, uh, at first the marketeers will tell to you that, oh, we like to have uh, 35 to 45 uh, with a family, with a stable income, uh, so we like to have nice people uh, as our customers. And uh, then when you start uh, feeding uh, the data and leads to them, then you will uh, find out pretty soon that uh, the risk, uh, risk rules or the decision rules inside those uh, credit organizations are quite different uh, organization by organization. So, so we're doing a lot of micro-segmentation there also. And, and, and so the, the customers coming, they fill the profile, so we micro-segment uh, private persons. We do the same micro-segmenting uh, with corporations, and then we do the matchmaking. And it might feel like an affiliate business model. Yeah, it's kind of uh, kind of is. Uh, but in traditional affiliate market uh, marketing model, uh, usually the affiliates are maximizing uh, the one deal. So then we are trying to maximize actually the lifetime value to users. So if you are, if you can't afford uh, a good loan today, 
then we tell it to you that you need to improve your profile and we, maybe we introduce you to, uh, to some uh, more risky uh, lender, but still regulated lender. So you, you're on the safe, safe side in this respect. And uh, when you treat your first loan and your second loan, then we start, can start introducing you to the next layers. So we're kind of helping uh, the private persons to build a credit uh, profile also to be, to be able for the better offers in the, in the future. So that's what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. And this is a fantastic example of your leveraging the model uh, coming from a country with 2 million people and uh, expanding to a market with 640 million people in Latin America. Yeah, and That's I personally have never been there. Uh, of course, we have our sales reps there and, and, and uh, uh, our, uh, our CEO has been traveling to see our partners there. But the, uh, but the product team and, and technology team and, and, and uh, all, all of this part of the team has never been there. So you don't need to start uh, buying expensive plane tickets. Uh, you really need to start from the researching the market the actual situation and you can get it done from the cold Estonia to the warm Mexico. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Agar. Fantastic. And, uh,